Hey, how's it going? So right now we're gonna cover the top five strategies to generate real estate leads inside of your business. Uh, it's one of the things that I think a lot of people really start to overthink when they're getting started rather than just choosing one. But we're gonna break down these five strategies, some of the pros and the cons, as well as what you need to try to work your company from the start uh, and grow into. So let's get to it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start from the cheapest form of marketing uh, to the most expensive. And so uh, the biggest thing that I want you to remember when I'm saying the cheapest is that there's no such thing as the cheapest marketing. There might be the cheapest in one singular send. Like for example, our first is gonna be text messaging. Text messaging is obviously one of the cheapest ways that you can market. Uh, it doesn't cost very much to send a text message. Uh, some platforms it can be as low as 0.001 uh, you know, cent per you know, send. However, there's a lot of things that you've gotta consider when you're thinking about text messaging. Text messaging, you have to send a massive amount to get a good response. Not only that, you're missing out on any of the landlines that you cannot uh, send a text message to, right? Um, so when I say the cheapest, what I'm talking about really is the uh, per action cheapest, okay? Um, there's some other things that you gotta think about when we talk about the cheapest being, for example, opportunity costs. If you're sending out all text messages and you're getting back you know, wrong messages and things like that, um, it, it can be really overwhelming to have to update and keep control of that those prospects to know who actually responded, who didn't respond. Um, if I text messaged one person and you know maybe they had three or four phone numbers, did all three of those phone numbers respond? Uh, it can be really chaotic. So text messaging is definitely the most common, cheapest form of. Uh, real estate marketing and it's definitely a really awesome tactic however at the end of this video I am going to cover how I would prefer people utilize text messaging um, as they scale their company so um, text messaging is number one number two is going to be cold calling uh, which is another um, tactic which is used I mean a ton 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 in every single industry not just real estate to generate leads However, with cold calling, one of the biggest things that we have to account for is time. Um, it takes time to sit and dial and all that other kind of stuff, which, which ends up resulting in people being lazy. And what I mean by that is they'll use a predictive dialer, for example, and they'll just load up a ton of phone numbers, they'll spend a bunch of money on skip tracing, and they will just call, 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 uh, which is gonna obviously give results. But again, we're losing a bunch of that opportunity cost um, because of the people who we're not reaching. Um, if you're doing this bulk tactic of, of cold calling and um, you're getting wrong numbers and people saying DNC and then later you text message them, if you don't have a process or a way to track all of that, you're gonna end up doubling or tripling your uh, marketing expenses because not only did you spend all that time picking up the phone and them saying, oh, you got the wrong number, but then later you text them and now you have to respond back to it then and that actually costs you more money to send the text message now. So if you don't do this properly, as I mentioned these strategies, um, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna not compound your results, but you're gonna compound your expenses. Um, so we gotta really be careful of these tactics. The other thing with cold calling at scale is that we have to obviously have more people to sit and dial in order to do it efficiently. However, it is a really nice, easy, simple KPI of how many uh, key performance indicator, uh, how many dials do I need to make in order to get a contract but there's just tons of other things in between there that we gotta watch out for, uh, which we cover in the Sensei Flow. If you guys wanna check the link in the description, um, I do have a uh, free Excel document that you can download to track those KPIs and a whole way to, to do that, which we'll talk about a little later as well. Number three is ringless voicemail, which many would argue is the second cheapest form of marketing. The reason why I have it as the third cheapest form of marketing is because of the fact that ringless voicemail requires a ton, 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 ton of sending. You have to send a ton of ringless voicemails and you have to have somebody's phone not full, right, to actually leave a voicemail. 
and you have to have a really good operation, meaning the, the flow is, is, is even more important with ringless voicemail. Some of the things would be like, when I send out a bunch of ringless voicemails, let's just say um, it's a thousand ringless voicemails, which by the way, a ringless voicemail um, is essentially when your phone shows it just got a voicemail, but your phone never rang. So as the platform sends out these voicemails, what they're doing is they're just dropping the voicemail inside of the phone without allowing it to ring. Every now and again, a ring slips by, but most of the time it'll just pop up, oh, you got a voicemail, and you look at your phone like, I didn't even hear it ring. Uh, and then usually it's somebody trying to sell you insurance or something like that, or you know, a real estate investor saying, hey, uh, I was you know, looking to buy a property in your area, give me a call back, my number's blank, 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 blank. But what this causes is a bunch of inbound of people who are not interested in selling. Um, so you have a lot of work hours that are dedicated towards having to case through all those. Some of the ways that people mitigate this is by leaving a different voicemail uh, or a different phone number in the voicemail than they did in the actual you know, attempt to call the person uh, to drop it because it'll still show that you had a missed call, it just won't ring. So it'll have a phone number on your call log, but then when you go into your voicemail, maybe you put a different phone number in the voicemail you're dropping, that way you know, okay, they're calling on that number, so I know that um, that person actually did listen to the voicemail, so you focus more of your energy over there. But again, opportunity costs, one of the things people do is they don't call back all the other numbers then, or they don't you know, annotate the DNCs or the wrong numbers, so they just continue to hit and they become an annoyance uh, to a lot of these sellers, which ultimately is how a lot of people end up getting sued and everything else, so um, through proper uh, data management and through proper uh, sequencing of your, your, your data through your marketing channels, um, you can eliminate a lot of not only your legal liability, but um, how much money you're spending on your marketing dollars, uh, in addition to uh, the unknown opportunity cost you're losing by just not knowing the results, the true results of your marketing. Okay, number four, and one of my personal favorites favorites is gonna be direct mail. Direct mail is gonna be one of your most expensive if done how most people do it, which is just getting a list and just sending it direct mail. Um, I don't believe in that tactic. I believe in uh, doing focused direct mail, meaning I'm sending direct mail to only the people that I can't reach in through the previous marketing strategies. Um, and of course, um, this also plays in the part of, am I focusing on uh, a large amount of data or like a smaller subset of data. Um, I love with my direct mail, uh, for example, having um, a weekly list that I'm pulling. Let's just say it's probates I'm pulling weekly. Um, when I intake those probates weekly, we're calling through, we're, we're calling through um, all those new records. We're also sending a text message manually to each of those mobile numbers. And then anybody who we can't reach, we're putting it on uh, direct mail. Uh, and then starting to try to reach out to the siblings. So for certain data sets, um, you can drastically reduce that overhead by simply knowing if you have or have not reached them through the other tactics. Um, and then we can use that more expensive tactic like direct mail for those. And of course, you could still send bulk direct mail to like, you know, just straight high equity if you would like. Just make sure that you're tracking how many you're sending, how many inbounds you're getting back, and then how many of those inbounds are actually leads, and then how many of those leads convert into actual contracts, and most importantly, uh, how many of those contracts actually produce revenue for your company. Um, so direct mail is a fantastic strategy. Uh, postcards are amazing, letters are amazing. Um, with direct mail and, and with really any of these marketing strategies, what's most important is that we have a three to six month consistency, not changing things up, just doing the same thing um, to get that true uh, KPI, okay? Fifth and last tactic uh, is gonna be online, okay? Online marketing is probably one of the most least understood forms of marketing because there's a lot of variables. Anytime you add technology into the piece, obviously you're gonna get a little bit more of different variances and, and the chance of one person's success versus another person's success is drastically affected by the capabilities of the person performing that strategy. With online, you have two primary different types of marketing. You have pay-per-click, which is generally you know, an acronym PPC, uh, which would be not only Google ads, but also your Facebook ads. Anytime someone has to click on a button and you get charged for that is pay-per-click. And then you have what's called search engine optimization, which is essentially where you have your website and you work to rank that website up on 
Google so, or, or, and Bing and everywhere else so that as people are marketing or, or searching Google in these locations for the service that you provide, you'll pop up higher in those search results so that you can uh, not have to essentially pay um, you know, for, their, for them to find you, right? Like once you do it once with SEO and, and you continue and have like a, a pace with it, you don't have to worry about continuing to spend a ton of money. It's like the gift that keeps giving, right? It's kind of like having a physical building where you have your sign outside and people are driving past saying, oh, hey, uh, I need that, you know, or people Google and find your business or if you ever have Googled for a local mechanic and it pops up in Google showing that there's a mechanic around the corner and you call them, right? That's an organic lead that they've just generated simply by having a Google My Business account. So um, online is definitely an amazing strategy. It's one of the very first things that nearly every single business should at least set up. They should at least set up a Facebook business account so that they have a, a Facebook business page that at least when you search your company name, that can pop up um, and people can reach out to you and you should be consistent in posting you know, things weekly on there and showing activity because what a lot of people will do nowadays is they'll search online, they'll look at your Facebook page and if they don't see any activity, they assume that you're not in business no more, right? Um, just like if you look at Yelp for a restaurant and you don't see any reviews, you're gonna assume, yeah, I'm just maybe gonna go somewhere else, right? So online is really, really efficient. Okay, so before moving over to the next part of this video, what I wanna make sure that we pause for real quick is if you were gonna start like right now, like if you're brand new to real estate and you're about to get started, what I would highly recommend is you get one single list, uh, preferably a list that is from your county, like a vexation list, like tax delinquency, probates, foreclosures, something that has time and money associated with it that you can solve a problem. Upload that into REI Sift and focus on the vacant properties that are inside of that list and then follow the Sensei flow in the description below, which is essentially just calling through each of those numbers using click to call and then sending a text message and then uh, leaving a voicemail on any voicemails and then ultimately sending a letter uh, to that individual or door knocking them if you can't reach them. If you have a thousand individuals that you do that to, the chances that you don't get a deal are very, very slim as long as you do that process. So if you're brand new, definitely do that. And if you're a larger company and you're watching this video and you're not doing that strategy to your top 1% of data, then you're truly missing out on a lot of opportunity. And this is why you continue to have people that have deals that come through the pipeline and you're like, how did they get that deal and I didn't if we're marketing to the same exact people. So I've talked a little bit about the pros and cons of each of these different strategies. Text messaging um, being that you know you solely need a mobile number um, you know, to be able to text message. You're gonna miss out on all those landlines which a lot of the sellers that you work with are elderly individuals and they sometimes don't have mobiles, right? They only have a landline. So you're missing out on those individuals. Uh, cold calling uh, being second, which is, which is an absolutely fantastic strategy, uh, but a lot of people mess up doing it in volume because of the fact that um, they're not tracking how many dead phone numbers they get, and you really never know with predictive dialers because it just kind of skips through those dead phone numbers. Um, and so you end up spending a lot of money hiring a bunch of cold callers, and you end up buying more data, skip tracing more data, because typically when you scale cold calling, uh, it requires a lot more people, and realistically what you should be doing is first focus on the true KPI that is needed to reach the individuals, how many correct numbers it to a, uh, does it take to get a contract, and then how many prospects res is needed to result to that, um, and then scaling into more of that bulk cold calling. Um, ringless voicemail being third, and um, again, ringless voicemail is one of those things that it has to be a ton of volume, and you miss out on a lot of clarity in between the lines, right? You get inbound calls, but if you don't do it right, you're gonna get a bunch of people that aren't interested. Um, a lot of these tactics are just better when they're focused, and then you scale on that focus, okay? Um, direct mail being uh, fourth and one of my favorites. It's the gift that keeps giving. It's, it's one of those things where it's amazing because once you have somebody that you can't reach via the phone, you know that they're gonna check their mail and if you get it returned the sender so it comes back to you and you couldn't reach the person on the phone and now you have a direct mail piece, well fantastic because now I know that I just verified my assumption that that person can't be reached at all. So now I'm gonna start focusing on some siblings. So uh, direct mail basically gives you the capability to get in front of somebody where they don't have a choice but to look at your name and look at your phone number. Um, and it also gives the ability for you to have a historical archive in somebody's uh, kitchen drawer. So um, lastly, online. Benefits to online is, is that you can hit a lot of people in volume. 
Um, you know, people who click on it and come to it are typically more motivated if they follow through with all your sign up forms and everything. Uh, we use Carrot websites for this, which there's a link in the description for. And also, um, you know, it's again the gift that keeps giving. The more that you focus on your online efforts, the more that people are going to find you. There's a lot of free ways that you can post on Facebook groups and Craigslist ads in order to drive traffic to your website or you can use as your credibility for people to uh, do business with you. Um, downfalls to online obviously again are the fact that well you have a skill set barrier that you might not understand fully how to do it uh, so typically it's better to maybe pay somebody who knows how to um, do the Facebook ads and things like that and track the results and then just give you a report every week on what happens um, however you can get started on, on online ads simply by creating a or um, online marketing by creating a Facebook business profile uh, creating a Google my business profile um, and, and starting to just do a post using like canva.com every single week and you have a VA do that for you and show traction, show activity and posting Craigslist ads and then just kind of funneling people to your website. Okay, I kind of talked a little bit about bulk uh, a good bit here. So the difference between bulk marketing and some of the other strategies you can do is bulk marketing can get a hand, uh, like you can lose control of it really quickly. Um, bulk marketing is the form of having a ton of data and pushing out a lot of marketing all at once um, com compared to more niche uh, sequential marketing, uh, which would be um, taking a smaller data set that you know are individuals who need to be reached and doing one-off cold calling against those individuals. If you get a voicemail, you leave a voicemail. If it's a mobile phone number, you send in a text message and then you try to do that a few times. Um, some of those phone numbers of that prospect are gonna end up being wrong numbers, dead numbers, and so on. So you should track that, which REI SIF does really, really well. And then any of the phone numbers who aren't answering after you try them a few times, you're gonna presume that it's, uh, or assume that it's a bad number, and you're going to go ahead and move uh, that to direct mail, which is a more expensive tactic. That way we can get that direct mail piece out to that individual. And if you get a return mail piece from them, then okay, we know that we've just verified our assumption that that person's not gonna be reached at that home. So we're gonna start researching their siblings and things like that. Now, do you wanna do that against like 300,000 records, that tactic I just mentioned with the sequential flow? Absolutely not, that's gonna take a very long time. But you wanna do at least 50 records a day or so. Again, uh, check the links in the description. There's a Sensei Flow video. We actually have a diagram of exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Uh, in addition to a, a couple videos that are really, really important um, on how to set up that ability to market not only to your uh, most valuable prospects, but also to your leads and, and maintain control of those. Um, now, as you gain control of doing this tactic and you know your KPIs, your key performance indicators, and you know how many text messages it's taken to get a response, you know how many phone calls it takes to get a result, um, now we can start taking a higher um, volume of data. We can say, okay, instead of just doing these thousand records and working through these ones and then uh, my weekly data that I'm getting in from probates or whatever other vexation I'm focusing on, um, now I'm gonna start also focusing on like, you know, some high equity data or um, some of my probates that are, um, you know, uh, you know, not vacant, for example, or something like that. And I'm gonna throw those into a dialer and I'm gonna start calling through those, that's totally fine. That's the natural progression to scale in a company is to do sequential one-off marketing and then work up into, as you get a budget, into bulk marketing. And as you call through those you know, um, prospects in bulk, what you're gonna do is you're going to, after the first call through, you're gonna send back all the people and phone numbers you didn't reach again, you're gonna call through them again. You're gonna do that between three to six times and then you're gonna move all of the people who you haven't reached yet and all those phone numbers over to the next bulk marketing strategy, which might be you know, text messaging. If you cold called first, you go from cold calling to text messaging and then you move it to RVMs. So you basically do the same thing you're doing one off as if you're trying to reach one individual, but you're doing it in a volume, moving larger data sets from one marketing strategy to the next marketing strategy to the next marketing strategy. And after you move that data set through those um, that cycle, you're gonna end up having a, essentially a pool of individuals or a segmentation of individuals who you didn't reach through all of those tactics, which you then need to decide, okay, do I now send direct mail to these individuals um, or do I maybe re-skip trace them to find more phone numbers or 
um, for the more valuable prospects out of that segmentation, do I go ahead and just start trying to reach out to some of their siblings and stuff like that? If you have any questions whatsoever, comment below. We'll do our best to answer. And hopefully this was valuable to you guys on um, not just Googling and trying to find information of like, what is the top strategies for, for marketing? Because the answer is that they're all great. Um, it's the process behind it that is the most powerful. It doesn't matter if you're using one cold calling platform, one SMS platform or the other, yada, yada, yada. It's all about the actual process that you're executing on. And that's what we focus on here at REICF is really teaching you that true process to make sure that you're turning more prospects to leads and more leads to actual revenue. So thank you guys so much. See you guys in the next video. Bye.